Welcome to the Columbus Area United Way Connecting Community Podcast. This is where we interview local nonprofit leaders and explore how we can collaborate to have a thriving community. Hello, and welcome to Columbus Area United Way Connecting Community. I am with Rachel Sifrin with the Arc of Platte County. So welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're super excited to have you here today. Um, so before we kind of get into the nitty gritty of what the Arc all does, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became involved with the Arc. So my name is Rachel Sifring, and I live between Rising City and Surprise. I'm married to Kevin, and we have two kids, Braxton and Aubrey. Um, Aubrey's 16, and Braxton is 14. Braxton is nonverbal and uses the Dynavox to communicate. Okay. And so when Braxton was younger, we kind of started looking out for programs and things he could be involved in, and we found the ARC. Mm -hmm. And so we've been a member probably since about seven years ago, when he was about seven years old, and started attending Pals and Play and the summer friends camp and just loved it and so that was kind of my first interaction with the arc well now I was asked to be on the board so I've been on the board of directors for about a year now Wonderful. So those that may not be familiar with the ARC, because the ARC is a, a partner agency of Columbus Area United Way, and I know what you kind of offer and do and the impact that you make in the community, but tell us just what is the mission and the purpose of the ARC and what are some of the things that you do and provide for individuals in our community? I think the purpose would be to have programs for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We, some of those people can't always participate in your regular camps or your regular sports. Mm -hmm. And so our mission is to give them as many opportunities as we can. And we have some really great programs. Some of our programs are the Summer Friends Special Needs Camp, mm -hmm. which is every summer this year. We had our 25th year. Yay. We It's very fun. It's three days, and they do so many different activities. We match each camper up with a volunteer, and then we have other people from the community that come in and do activities, do games. Um, the kids ride horses. Wow. We actually, we live on a farm and we have sheep. So the last couple of years we brought our sheep oh, wow. and our son gets to tell everyone else about his sheep and they pet them and they walk them. And that's one of my favorite programs. And then also I think a big thing about the ARC is bringing out the talents of everybody, to, mm -hmm. for everyone to know that everyone can be capable of doing things and can have talents. So to end the camp, we have a talent show. Oh. Every, the last <laughs> night, we have a talent show. And all week, the kids and their volunteers work on their talent. Okay. And so some might have a band, some might play basketball, some might sing, and it's super fun to see. Oh, that's so awesome. that's a great one. And then we also have the Cloud Nine Dance was mm -hmm. something we did this year, yes. and that went over were amazing. Mm -hmm. Lots of, you know, people from 14 and up. That was our son. He just turned 14. So it was his first time to get to go to the dance. Yes. And that was so fun. Walk the red carpet, wear a tux. Mm -hmm. Again, we match individuals with volunteers mm -hmm. and had so much great help. And they got to have a dinner and go on a limo and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. Um, we also have the Pals and Play Respite Days, okay. which when my kids were younger as a parent, I really appreciated that mm -hmm. because it gave us an opportunity for my husband and I to maybe go out to dinner ourselves or go mm -hmm. shopping while the kids were, you know, did activities and played at the gym. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Parents for Parents, which is another group of just educating parents, you know, that when kids are younger and you find out your child has a disability, you might have some questions. So kind mm -hmm. of a group for that. And then Project Guardian Angel, mm -hmm. which is another opportunity that we have for students just to um, we connect with the police department mm -hmm. and give them information so if someone would ever be in an emergency they would have information on that individual and could help them. So some amazing programs because not only is it programs for individuals who have disabilities themselves to connect with others and to bring out highlights within their own talents and engagement with others, but also for parents and caregivers who um, love children and have this aspect, but also need to have that support, right? Yes. So absolutely. can you tell us a little bit more about, because I know the Cloud9 is kind of a shift and it's new um, and, and how that kind of has transitioned into our community and what that looks like. Yeah. <laughs> 
So it started out kind of the Night to Shine is kind of the bigger organization, but Columbus, I feel, has just embraced it. Mm -hmm. We had such a great turnout, and we've had so many sponsors and people that want to be involved in it. And so now we've been able to host this dance at the 1C Church, Mm -hmm. and the... um, individuals get to go get tuxes and get dresses and they get their hair done and come to this like prom Mm -hmm. and it has been just wonderful and so well received and I know we had people from many different counties in the area they were able to come attend and it's just a fun event and I think again like you said not only for the individuals but it's just such a rewarding experience for everyone involved the community the parents I mean again my husband and I had a night out, you know, dropped our son off. And and I think that's part of it too, is, you know, for caregivers to be able to, you know, let their children enjoy these normal things that everybody else does. And then just you know, trust that they're going to be fine. Yes, that's awesome. That's amazing. I have heard that it is probably one of the best parties of the year to attend. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) So with that, um, in the the work that you've done, um, being on the board, as well as just, you know, being a parent um, yourself, what would be some, you know, misconceptions that you would want other people to know in regards to what the ARC does and the services it provides? I think, first of all, it would be, you know, the misconception that people look at children or adults with disabilities, intellectual or developmental disabilities, and think, oh, well, they wouldn't be interested in activities. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be capable of doing these activities. And I feel like the ARC just does such a great job of disproving that, Mm -hmm. of saying, no, all individuals are capable of everything. I guess, you know what, one program I think I might have forgot was People First. People First is a very important program that, you know, shows adults that they are first an individual, disability second. You know, that what you are and what you're capable of is so much more important than your disability. And I think that's what the art kind of disproves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. I mean, it's the aspect of that uh, individuals, even though they might have disabilities, there's um, avenues in regards to engagement and interaction and inclusiveness, right? And that's what we want for everyone within our community to feel welcomed, to feel engaged, and to feel connected. Um, so as a board member, what are some things that you're seeing from the perspective of the ARC? I know that right now you're looking uh, for a current executive director. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and what that might entail? Sure. Yeah, we're very excited going forward. We have a lot of great programs and we're improving them. And as far as changes and stuff, we are currently looking for an executive director. And I think it's a great job for anybody who is interested in helping people in working with individuals with disabilities. It's such a rewarding experience. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun too. I mean, we're looking for the right person that would have some office skills, but also be able communication skills, work with the public, things like that. And I think it's a very, I mean, it's a fun job. Job mm-hmm. where you get a lot of out what you put in, you know, I think mm-hmm. it'll be great. Mm-hmm. So, and if someone was interested in knowing more about that, where would they go for that information? They could go to our website, the Arc of Platt County, or also call the Arc of Platt County. And I believe it's also on our Facebook page is the information is on there as well. So without um, maybe necessarily, you know, minding confidentiality or whatnot, would you be able to share any story with our listeners of um, the impact ARC has made upon an individual themselves or their family members? Sure. Well, my son, I guess I can tell you from. So we actually live about 25 miles away, pretty rural community. And like I said, it was kind of hard when he was younger, you know, what kind of activities you want your kids to be involved in stuff. And it was harder because he didn't talk. Mm -hmm. And so we found the ARC and found Pals and play and summer camp and he started participating and just to see the friendships and relationships that he was able to build with people that lived in a town you know 30 miles away was just incredible and he's so comfortable now in these social situations because of some of those programs um 
we, when he'll come with some of his classmates or other friends to town and all these people will come up and talk to him and, you know, we might not know who they are and they're like, oh, I know him from camp or I know him from pals and play and stuff like that. And so it's so neat to see the, you know, a kid that can't speak was able to build all these relationships on mm -hmm. uh, part of the, because of the ARC and because of the program. So that's, amazing. that's why it means so much to us, I guess. Mm -hmm. That, and he, and from what I hear you saying is that you have seen him just blossom. Oh, absolutely. And grow and build those relationships, right? Absolutely. He was so excited to go to prom and he knew <laughs> so many people there. And when he was younger, you know, he maybe would shy away, wouldn't necessarily, you know, talk to a lot of right. different people, interact with a lot of different people. But because of some of these programs, he has also, I think, performing in front of people. He has learned a lot from like summer camp, doing the talent show. Yeah. That's been a thing that he never necessarily would have enjoyed, but has gotten a lot better at. That's amazing. And when you speak of the summer camp, I mean, I know, um, you know, COVID impacted that for a short period of time um, because of the elements of not being able to gather. But in that regard, like, it, tell me those numbers in regards to how many kids actually attend summer camp typically that you have in a summer. So I think we usually have about 25 campers mm -hmm. and then I think like 60 to 70 volunteers. But this year it was so neat too. We also had a couple other um, programs in town that brought their whole groups of kids to interact. So it was so fun. I got to help take pictures and there were kids playing kickball, you know, and again, like you yes. said, the mixture of kids with disabilities, without mm -hmm. disabilities, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Everyone was just having fun together. Mm -hmm. And that was really neat to see. That's awesome. So speaking of volunteers, because you also depend heavily upon volunteers, um, how would someone get connected if they wanted to serve? And what would be some of those things that they would do? Yeah, a lot of our programs really depend on volunteers. Mm -hmm. And so for summer camp, for example, what we did this year was all the registration, everything was online. And so we shared everything on our Facebook page and email. And what we do is we, like I said, we match campers up. So if you're a volunteer, you basically get to have just as much fun as the campers do because you're right along with them. And you might just, you know, encourage them or help them as they need to participate. It might vary from camper to camper. Mm -hmm. um, dance, the dance is about the same way. We batch them up as buddies or you could help with a dinner or help with a um, limo ride, different things like that. Um, and pals and play. Well, the, the respite days was matching up the kids with the helpers and then also with siblings too. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, as we have the programs just on our website or reach out via email or call us okay. and we can always let people know about those information actually and we have a newsletter and okay. once you volunteer once we kind of get your information and so we send you out those cards and send all that out so you can keep updated on yep. what's going on that's yep. awesome so if anyone's new to the community and wants to be able to get involved this is a perfect opportunity for them to get involved because it's fun it's interactive and you get to meet some really great people absolutely actually it's been fun because our daughter who is 16 has has been able to volunteer. So our awesome. son goes as a camper and she goes as a volunteer and she has learned again so much about everybody and able to meet people and interact with people and build friendships and relationships. And that's been fun. That's awesome, Rachel. So I ask everyone this question because we're all human and we love um, music. So just for fun, if you had to have a go-to karaoke song, what would your go-to karaoke song be? Mm, Eye of the Tiger is my song. That's my pump up song. That's my go to everything. So Eye of the Tiger. Nice. I like yep. it. Some Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> all right. Well, Rachel, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. We appreciate all that you do and the impact you make in our area for individuals with um, through the Arc of Platte County. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the United Way and everything that you do to support us and help us. We could not do it without you and truly appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.